the PlayStation Vita offers an incredible homebrew gaming experience if you jailbreak it. Stick around and I'll show you everything that you need to do to get the process done, step by step, all coming up next. If you like original video content on restoring, repairing, and modding consoles and other great video game content, click the subscribe button now so you don't miss out on great new videos as they're published to the channel. Thanks so much! Hi, my name is Blaine. If you're new here, thanks for being here. Just want to let you know, this is one of the more difficult soft mods that I've done on the channel. But if you're looking at this video right now, it's already done and successful or there wouldn't be a video on it. If you've made it this far, I have faith in you. All you have to do is shuffle around some files and run them on the Vita. You'll find at the end of the process that the Vita has tremendous value added to it through the homebrew market. Someone mentioned in one of my recent comments, they said it's like taking a journey to get to a destination, and I think they're on to something. What you're gonna find is if you take this journey with your Vita, it will be a tremendous value add to your gaming experience. Okay, enough of the pep talk, let's get started. Right, you're underway. I'm gonna use the guide from vita.hacks.guide. This is a fantastic resource to get your Vita hack. There are some things about the guide though that might not directly apply to your situation, don't worry, I'm going to show you about those contingencies and what to do to deal with them. The guide is in sections and it's in timeline or chronological order. Just follow them as they are listed and you'll be fine. After reviewing the introductory text, you'll need to figure out which version of the PS Vita's firmware you have and what you need to install. Check your system software information on your Vita. The end game is going to be to put version 3.60 on there because it's the most compatible with the jailbreak. However, the most current version is 3.73, and you're probably gonna need to go ahead and update to that unless you're on 3.60. I'm demonstrating the process on a Slim 2000 model on version 3.73, so this is the version of H Encore that I'll need to start with, this one right here. So click that link. You'll be installing Final HE, which makes H Encore possible. What it kind of boils down to is this is the first catalyst that makes it possible to start putting unsigned code or homebrew code on the PlayStation Vita. In other words, it's your first exploit to open the door to the other things that you're gonna need. It doesn't stay permanently installed after a reboot, but Enzo is gonna take care of that. So click on the final AG download link here and you'll head over to one of my favorite places on the web, GitHub. There are some amazing coders doing some amazing work and posting it up on GitHub. Just scroll down on this page until you get to the final he.7z download and download it to wherever you download files on your computer, probably the downloads folder. Once you've got it downloaded, you'll need to uncompress it you can just go to 7zip.org or wherever you get your favorite uncompression software from and uncompress the file and it will give you a folder with the final HE installer on it that you are going to run from your Windows PC. Some of this stuff runs from the Vita, some from Windows. This one runs from Windows. Let me stop for a moment and just explain something. If you're on version 3.73 and your content management assistant is already updated on your computer, you're probably gonna be okay here. But here's the deal. I was on 3.71 and every time I tried to use the built-in content management, I got a big old bag full of no. Not just once, not just twice, but every time. The Vita is an end of life product. So Sony is not supporting it any longer which is not surprising because they're not selling it any longer. They haven't sold it in just over a year. So it's not surprising that this isn't being supported any longer. I'm gonna show you how to install the QCMA Content Management Assistant. It's gonna solve this problem for you. In your web browser, go back to GitHub. I'm gonna give you this link in the description below to get to the QCMA page on GitHub. This is a great developed product and it does a tremendous job of upgrading and replacing the original CMA built into the PlayStation Vita or downloaded from the internet. This is going to solve that problem of failed connectivity. 
you'll need to be on version 3.73, the latest firmware, for it to work correctly. Just come down to the Windows installer version and download this version to your computer. With the download process complete, you'll need to install QCMA on your computer. So go to where you downloaded that setup file and run it. I would recommend at each step of this process that any files that you run on your computer that you run them as an administrator. It's going to make the process a little bit easier and bypass some of the difficulties you might run into if you don't have full administrative privileges to run these programs. Just follow the usual next, I agree, and next prompts as you go along, and it'll install pretty quickly. I've sped up the video of the installation by 200% here, just to save you from having to sit around and watch paint dry. But there is one thing worth noting. As it goes through the installer process, at some point it may come up and ask you to install a driver for your PlayStation Vita in order to be able to access the memory card. No sweat. Just take the recommended USB driver and install it. Everything will go just fine. Once the installer is complete, you can run QCMA right out of the installer. As I'll show you in a moment, we'll just click on the icon. It actually lives down in the bottom right corner in your system tray. So once you run it, you may not see anything, but it's there and it's doing its job. And again, I absolutely recommend running all of these programs in administrator mode if you have access. If you don't, you probably won't be hacking this stuff anyway. When you first open up the software, the settings pops up. The directory should be fine, but I think there's a couple things to look for in advanced settings. Make sure offline mode is checked. If it's not, go ahead and check it. Make sure CMA protocol is set to latest. And make sure update is set to always up to date. Once you close the options window, it will live in the system tray, but you may get a pop-up from Windows Defender. If you do, just tell it to go ahead and run the program. It's perfectly safe. Once Windows Defender accepts it, you'll see right down here in the system taskbar, the QCMA is up and running. Time to open up that final HE that you downloaded so that you can connect it to your PS Vita and start the download process. So go ahead and open up the file that you downloaded and uncompressed. Once you get it up and running, go ahead and connect the USB cable on your PS Vita. Click on Copy Content, and you'll see this screen pop up on your Vita. I'm going to do the picture in picture so you can kind of see what's going on in real time. So then click on PC and USB cable. Quick note here, you only have to click that Trim H Encore box underneath Let's Go if you're on version 3.68 firmware or lower. Open the Content Manager app on the PS Vita. Then tap on Copy Content. Alright, now you can see Let's Go is highlighted instead of being grayed out. So tap on Let's Go on your PC. It's going to create the files necessary and prepare them for transfer to your PS Vita. Now that the primary actions take place on the Vita, I'm switching picture in picture. To get H Encore up and running for the first time on your Vita, tap on PC, then tap on PC to PS Vita, tap Applications, and PS Vita. You'll see the H Encore installer in the Applications folder. So tap on the H Encore installer. And yeah, you should probably have at least 50% battery on your device. My bad. Tell it OK. Tell it OK again. And the installation process begins. Time accelerated here to save you from watching grass grow. So the first install of H Encore is loaded onto your PS Vita. At this point, you can go ahead and close out Content Manager, and you can close out Final HE on your PC. Great. So go to the main menu on your PS Vita, 
and then scroll down, press the right shift button, and tap H Encore to launch it. Keep holding the right shift button. Tap to start. If it asks about trophies and it did every time for me, just tell it yes. If everything goes successfully, what you're going to see is called the bootstrap menu, which is this. If you see this, you're golden. If not, just go back and repeat the final HE install process. Scroll down to install Henkaku and press X. It installs very quickly. Then scroll down to download Vita Shell and press X. This one goes pretty quick too. Once these two tasks are complete, you can just go ahead and close out H Encore and go back to the PS Vita main menu. Anytime you see something shaking its booty on your home screen, that's a good sign, especially with what we're doing here. It means something new is there. Yeah, but for now, just leave it dancing. Go up to the Settings app on the Vita and tap in. You're going to see a new setting that wasn't there before called Hinkaku Settings. Go ahead and select it. You'll see an option here called Enable Unsafe Homebrew. You'll need to check it. Yeah, I know it sounds very dangerous with your beloved PS Vita, but remember, if there's a video on how to do this, it's already done and everything's good to go. Besides, isn't unsafe in the eye of the beholder anyway? Go ahead and tap it. And once you select it, just return back to the main menu of your PS Vita. In order to get the end game, which is Enzo, installed and running on your PS Vita and get it to stay permanently affixed, you're gonna need to downgrade to version 3.60 of the official firmware. But here's the deal, take a look through this reading required section. Not every PS Vita is gonna be able to take the 3.60 downgrade. If that's the case, well, at least you gave it a good try. But this one obviously took it, and I think most of them are gonna. This is a pretty good process. I think you're gonna be okay. You're gonna to need to download the official firmware here. So go ahead and grab it and download it to your favorite place on your computer, probably the downloads folder. Now I'll go ahead and time accelerate this because I know watching files download on YouTube is about as exciting as waiting for your overseas package to arrive in real time. Cool, so you're also gonna need the latest version of Modoru. This is what makes it possible to downgrade using that firmware. So go to the Medoro page. It's gonna take you to my beloved GitHub. All right, just scroll down here and get the Medoro installer. You'll find the one you need right here. Click it and download it to your favorite location. You'll need to get Medoro and the 3.60 firmware transferred over to your PS Vita memory card. You can use FTP, but in this instance, I'm using the USB cable. Make sure the USB cable is plugged in and tap on Vita Shell. Once you're in Vita Shell, press the select button on the Vita. That's going to enable the USB connection and mount the PS Vita card as a drive on your Windows computer. Using Windows File Explorer, go to the location where you downloaded Maduro and the 3.60 original firmware and copy them. Then go to that newly mounted drive. In this case, it's drive F. But go to that drive and then click on the data folder. This is where you want to paste these two files you just copied. Since watching files transfer is about as exciting as listening to Vogon poetry, we move on. Press circle on the Vita to exit USB connection mode. You'll need to go to the drive area listed as UX0 using the cross pad and the X button. Then scroll down to data, the data folder. That's the same one that you just copied the files to. Once there, scroll down to modoru.vpk and select it with the X button. It'll start the application installing.
It installs quickly. Once you're done, you'll need to copy a file around. Long story as to why they say shortcut, just ignore that. Come down to where it says PSP update file. Come down to it and press triangle and pick copy. At this point, you can delete the Midoru VPK file. So just slide up to it, press triangle for more options and press delete. You'll need to back out all the way to the root of the UX0 drive because you're gonna to need to access a different folder to paste that PSP update file. So at the root of UX0, go to the app folder. Inside the app folder, you'll see another folder called Midoru000. Go into that folder. That folder is where you wanna paste the PSP update file. So just pick triangle for more options and come down to paste. Again, ignore the word shortcut here. You will have copied the original file as I did eventually later. Long story. Back out to the root of UX0 again. You should see a folder there called TAI, T-A-I. Scroll down to that folder, press triangle and delete it. You will not need it as part of this install. And you're done with Vita Shell for the time being, so you can close it out. Bet you thought you were going to hear Starlight Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog, didn't you? Nope, that's Please Go Faster from Chiptunes Equals Win. Links in the description below. Go ahead and power cycle your Vita completely off and turn it back on. Right, once you're back up and running, run H Encore and hold the right shift button. Keep holding it down until you get to the menu again. Choose Install Henkaku and press X. Now that Henkaku is installed, press exit and go back to the main menu. Now go to the Vita settings menu. Go to Henkaku settings and then choose unlink memory card. When you see this message saying it can be used on any Vita, just press OK. Now that that's locked in, just press circle to go back and exit out of the settings. You're ready to run Midoru, but I just want to remind you the reason you're doing the downgrade to version 3.60 is because it's the most compatible with Enzo, which is the end game for installing the permanent jailbreak on the PS Vita. So at this point, Go ahead and tap on Midoru to run it. Press X at the prompt and it'll start the downgrade process. Midoru will do a little bit of its work first, then it'll transition over to the traditional, what would normally be a software upgrade screens in the Vita, but in this case, it'll be a downgrade process. Being forced to stare at upgrade screens is about as painful as watching reruns on the C-SPAN channel, but at least we get to do it together and at 800% speed. Your Vita is going to reboot, which is what you want it to do. Once it's rebooted, go into the settings menu so you can verify that you're on firmware version 3.6. There it is, version 3.60. Midoro did a great job taking care of this task. Remember how I mentioned early on that there'd be some things that might trip you up during the process from the guide? Well, this is one of them. We're going to put Henkaku on, and you're going to go to henkaku.xyz in your browser on your Vita. You'll get this page that shows Henkaku, 
and you'll have an install button. Tap the install button, and it'll say, are you sure? And tell it yes. Here's where things get a little bit problematic though, other than my dodgy finger there, missing the button about 62 times. Okay, there it goes. So as soon as I tapped install, here's this error message that just seems to come out of nowhere. What is going on? It's not supposed to error out, is it? Well, it might. If you get the error message, press on through it. What you should see though is it'll still do its job and Molecule is going to come in and install Henkaku anyway. See here? This is exactly what happened. So it kind of errored out and then said, sure, I'll do it anyway. This might start to feel like you're running in circles, but don't worry, you're almost there. Back to settings, Henkaku settings. and enable unsafe homebrew. Hit circle to lock it in and close settings. So you're finally at the step where you're gonna install Enzo on your Vita. Enzo is really the end game because this is the persistent or permanent jailbreak that you've been wanting to put on here. So read the stuff over. You're gonna to need to get the latest release of Enzo and you also need to download another version of Vita Shell. Come down and click on the download links. Back on the beloved hub Scroll down until you get to the Enzo VPK file, the package file. Click it and download it to your favorite download location on your computer. With the Enzo VPK downloaded, go grab the latest release of Vita Shell. Yeah, I know it seems kind of redundant also. But the Vita Hacks Guide calls for it. And there's no reason to doubt the wisdom of the elders on this one. Just go get it. Follow the steps. Download the VPK. Go to Vita Shell and plug in the USB cable into both the Vita and your computer. Then press the select button to activate the connection between the two. With the USB connection established, go ahead and grab Enzo and the Vita Shell VPKs that you downloaded. Copy them, then go to that F drive or the what's ultimately the UX0, but on this system it's the F drive. Go to the data folder and paste them in there. But anything else that's in the data folder, you can also go ahead and just delete out. The only two things you need in there at this point are Enzo and the most recent version of Vita Shell that you downloaded. Navigate to UX0 and the data folder. You'll find the Enzo and Vita Shell VPK files here. I don't know what happened with the camcorder. This wouldn't clear up in post either, but you'll get the point. I know they look a bit clear as mud here, but just mark them both with square. Then go up to triangle to pull up some additional options. Come down until you get to more and pick install all. And naturally X through the menu choices to advance. And the usual strangeness that this process seems to bring I got an error message, but everything works out okay. Just press okay and continue on. At this point, go ahead and close out of the shell. Back to the Vita main menu. Excited new apps just dance away on the home screen. Enzo's ready to install. Go ahead and tap on Enzo to begin the process. 
tap on the molecule icon, press circle to accept Enzo's terms, and then press X to start the install process. You're going to need to reboot your PS Vita in order for Enzo to take hold. So press any key to restart. Once your Vita reboots, you're going to be looking for something just a little bit different than what you normally see where you see the PlayStation logo. And this is it. It's the Enzo logo. Congratulations, you have jailbroken your PS Vita and it is a permanent jailbreak. It is going to stay there even if you power off the console and reboot it. There are some key items you should really set up on your newly jailbroken Vita to add tremendous value to it. The Vita Homebrew Browser, which lets you download other homebrew applications onto your Vita. No NPDRM which allows for encrypted games and applications to be used. Refood, which basically spoofs the firmware version up to 3.73 for any apps that require that. Download Enabler, which allows any file type to be downloaded. Shellbat, which shows the real battery percentage up in the bar instead of just the generic bar, thank goodness. And PNG Shot, which improves the built-in screenshot utility. You'll need to download each of the files you see here and save them on your local computer. File download sites really love their pop-up ads, and this thing really thinks I need to clean my PC, but I'm going to spare you that. Just go to the green box, click download, and come down here and save it on your local computer. The config.txt file that you need is an easy one because it's saved right here on the local site. Just click on it and save it. You'll need the latest version of the Vita Homebrew Browser, so come on over to the link and click. Let me just say, the GitHub, when I keep calling it my beloved GitHub, it's not the website I'm in love with. It's just the many people's work and time and efforts and passions that they put into these projects that they put on GitHub. There are some amazing folks, some amazing developers and coders that put projects together on the GitHub. And I really, really respect them for the contributions they make to the gaming community. Good job, everyone. Next, click on No NPDRM and grab a copy of it off the Git. You'll notice these remaining files all have a different extension than the standard VPK that you've been downloading previously. They're actually going to go to a different part of the Vita, and you'll look at that here in just a moment once all this stuff is downloaded. So just keep on rolling through it. Download each one of these files and save them to your local computer. So I've left this whole downloading process on the video specifically to show you which links to click on each of these GitHub pages. Sometimes it's not completely intuitive which file you need or which place to download it on a GitHub page. That's why I've left this in place, just to show you exactly where to go on each of these individual pages to get the exact file you need. And because they have different file extensions, depending on which of the files you're going to get to accomplish each task. So I think it's just a little easier to just see exactly where to go to get exactly what you're looking for to complete this task. So hang in, it's almost done, and we'll move on to that final step of transferring this stuff over to the Vita, and you will be done. Alright, this is the last one you need off the list right here. Grab all of the files you just downloaded, 
and copy them all over to your PS Vita memory card. That's going to be that drive F here. Once you go back to Vita shell and then hit select to connect by USB over the data cable. It's going to be the UX0 drive when you get over to the PS Vita. Here's the thing. It's easy with this many files downloaded over the course of a project to get a little bit turned around and go, good grief, did I get all of these things? Don't be bashful about going back and just double checking that list on Vita Hacks Guide and make sure you got them all. As you're going to find out here, I've grabbed a few and then went, oh, I missed a couple. And then realized, you know what, I didn't even put the homebrew browser file on there. You won't see it on video, but as you're about to find out, I put it on there. So you need to grab all of the files and just transfer them over to the data folder. Because we're doing this by USB, you cannot access the internal storage on the Vita that you're going to need to move this stuff over to. But don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do that on Vita Shell. It's the only thing that you can't access by the USB cable. You can access the memory card, but you'll need to move this stuff over on the Vita Shell. No worries, it's quick and easy. Cool, so we're on the Vita. The homebrew browser will be in the right place already. It needs to stay in that F drive slash data or what becomes UX zero data on the PSP. Just leave it there because we're gonna run an installer for it in just a little bit. Go into UX zero and then delete the tie folder again. So select triangle on the folder, come down to delete and delete that folder. Now go into the data folder for UX0. Remember we transferred all those files over? You will need to move them onto the UR0 drive. So just select them all one at a time with the square button, then press triangle and copy them. We'll move them all. You just can't access UR0 by USB. You can by FTP, but not USB. So this is just the one step that USB requires. Just copy them and we'll move them right over. Now back out to the root again and go to the UR0 folder this time. Then go to the tie folder. Paste everything you just copied here. You might see some stuff in there already, it's no worries. Just go ahead and paste everything, including overwriting the config file here. It copied them all in bulk, so it'll paste them all in bulk. in the UXO drive and in the data folder. Remember, you've already copied over the Vita Homebrew browser there. So navigate over to data, and you'll see the Vita Homebrew browser installer. Scroll down to it and click X to start the install process. It'll ask you, are you sure you want to do it? And you definitely do, so press X. Now that the homebrew browser is installed, you can safely delete the installer file and save a little bit of space. So just press triangle for more options, come down to install and delete the file. You'll need to tell your PSP not to do any updates. You don't want to do anything to attempt to undo all of this hard work you've done. So go into the Settings app. From Settings, tap on Network. Then tap on Wi-Fi Settings. And choose your wireless network. Yep, mine's BB-8. Then go to advanced settings. In advanced settings, you need to change DNS from automatic to manual. Once you've got manual set up, 
Go into both primary and secondary DNS and type in this number. It's 212.47.229.76. So you'll need to do this twice, once for primary and once for secondary. It's the same number for both. It should already be set, but just make sure the proxy server is set to Do Not Use. Back to the main menu for settings. Go to Henkaku Settings and make sure Enable PSN Spoofing and Enable Version Spoofing are both checked. Come down to Spoofed Version and type in 3.73. Save that change, close out the settings app. At this point, you'll need to go into Content Manager just to do a little bit of cleanup and get rid of some of the files that you installed on there that you don't need anymore. No sense wasting space. So go into the Content Manager. Select Manage Content on Memory Card. Then go to PS Vita and Applications. If you still have them on there, and you probably do, you can delete the following. You can delete Enso. Don't worry, you're not deleting that off your system, just off the memory card, just the installer. Midoru, Molecular Shell, and H Encore. And when you're done, close the Content Manager. And that, my friend, is job done. Your Vita is jailbroken, it is permanent, it's cleaned up, and it's ready to roll. I would recommend going to the Homebrew app and just downloading some games and things that interest you. There is a ton of great stuff out there. It's all free and you can download it directly to your Vita. Also, make sure to comprehensively read the Vita Hacks Guide as you go along through this journey. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it added value to your gaming experiences and I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe so you don't miss all of the new upcoming original content coming your way soon. Thanks so much. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.